away. Start from the front row of the grid. Can Jamie Stouffer and Troy Herpos get the better of Wayne Maxwell and Mad Jamie Mike Jones? This time around. I think uh, Wayne Maxwell's actually put himself up into a second place as they filter through there for the first time. Herfoss has done it on the first lap, Trev. Wow. He's up the inside of Maxwell <laughs> and into second place as they make their way out onto the Ipone straight. Wayne's Jones is right in there as well. Look back. at Glenn Allerton. Wow, yeah, Glenn has had a huge set of brakes he displayed in the Northern Hairpin there at, uh, in the first start of this race. And uh, so, yeah, he's certainly fu full of vigour in this final stanza today as we have Jamie lead through her first through Kawasaki Kink, turn four. So Glenn Allerton is certainly all fired up now as we start. Here comes Jones up the inside. Can he get the better of Allerton? Crew Halliday just leans on Mad Mike Jones as well and tries to follow his teammate around. Tries to go back up the inside oh, and change the direction. He pulls it off too. Good move, Crew. It's like a smash-up derby back there in the field with everyone <laughs> elbowing each other as they made their way through Honda Corner oh, and then into the long, oh, sweeping left-hander. So sideways under brakes was uh, Troy Herfoss yesterday that overnight Team Honda have taken the lock stops off the steering lock of that uh, of that fire blade so he can wind on even more opposite lock. Well, as they come across the line to complete the first lap, it is Jamie Stofer leading from Troy Herfoss, Wayne Maxwell, Glenn Allerton, Crew Halliday, Mad Mike Jones, back there in sixth position. So Troy Herfoss will be extremely keen to put Jamie in between him and Wayne Maxwell. Of course, these two, the leading contenders at the front of the series. Hey, Wayne Maxwell up the inside of Herfoss, that's the last thing Herfoss wanted to happen. And 10 oh, point over, over the ripple strip. strip. It's going to cost him some time. And we've got another person down. Is that Burke? That's Betty Burke on board oh, bike number 60. Unceremonious end to what had been quite a glorious weekend for the Kawasaki rider. Yes, uh, unfortunately, he's tested out the held up. leathers there. And so oh. here comes Jones down and the inside Alan of Crew Halliday. Allen's got past Herfoss as well. So Herfoss shuffled back to fourth. So, and as we came into this race, it was 10 points the difference between Troy Herfoss and Wayne Maxwell at the head of the championship. 91 points to Herfoss, 81 points to Maxwell, and they were tied 43 apiece for the round, and uh, this is the final race. Troy Herfoss needs to keep a cool head and try and get past those Yamahas if he can. As they come across the start. Oh, start. Allerton! Did you see the head shake there from Allerton's machine as the front wheel was off the ground, yes, trying to... Uh, Get the drive down into turn one. Allerton is full of aggression here this afternoon. He's looking to uh, really make an impact on this race, is Glenn Allerton. Of course, tyre wear, um, cumulative tyre wear over the course of the day, uh, a big issue for all these riders, and it seems to have been so far this year. The Honda's a little bit friendlier on its tyres than the Yamaha. And of course, there's still a long way to go in this race, so things could still shake up a lot from here. Oh, pretty keen magpie sitting on the inside of the, uh, the Kawasaki kink there as Matt Walters goes through on board the uh, Kawasaki connection machine. He's a race fan. It's Jamie Stofer still leading as they make their way down into the Honda hairpin on board his Honda CBR 1000 RRSP. Of course, the uprated version of the, uh, the CBR. Longest, uh, well, oldest bike out there in terms of uh, model run, but the CBR SP is only a couple of years old now with that uh, upgraded forks. In fact, all of the uh, the top level bikes now from Honda and Yamaha come equipped with Olin's fork strip. But of course, the Honda, the only one without the fly-by-wire throttle. And, uh, well, no real uh, traction control to speak of. The Yamaha does come with it, even though it's all turned off on board uh, Wayne Maxwell, Glenn Allerton and Crew Halliday's machines at the moment as they try and develop the bike. I can't help but think all these boys are uh, just settling in and going in the settling in phase of this race now and uh, just seeing how things shake out before there's any silly moves happen. They're all in the sevens. No one's Seven. cracked into the sixes yet. 7.0 that time around for Maxwell, Allerton and Herfoss. Herfoss the fastest oh, man. Oh, Allerton! Largely. Allerton's bike starting to get the hippy hippy shakes as he screws the power on. Certainly not worried about the longevity of the rear no. Dunlop control tyre is Glenn Allerton. Allerton's just full of aggression this afternoon. Wayne uh, doing a bit of the flick that uh, Jamie Stofer pulls off so well. He couldn't help it if he was following Jamie in there. They were both uh, with the rear ends pointing into the inside of the circuit. Well, look, Mike Jones isn't out of the running either, Phil. He's in fifth place and not that far behind at all. And he's got uh, Sean Condon for company as well, uh, not too far behind Crew Halliday. And again, closes right up on Maxwell. If I'm still there, he's just settling in. Like I say, he probably thinks he might have the tyres at the end of the race. Jamie still leads. Everyone's starting to move around a little bit as they get the power down as they come out onto the Swan Insurance straight. And Jamie, two and a half months off the bike after that injury, so he's doing extremely well here this weekend. But he will be physically destroyed, I think it's fair to say, by the end of this race. Yes, might not be feeling uh, all that flash tomorrow. Jamie Stouffer be a bit stiff and sore after uh, a huge amount of uh, load on his body this weekend. But 
that if Jamie Stoker can actually win this race, we'll see the same as yesterday. Three different race victors over the three uh, races in the program. I said Mike Jones wasn't here to this, and he just declared that his intention was 6.8. 66.8 on Mike Jones on that last lap. Eight laps to run. Only man into the sixes uh, so far in this race. As uh, we see Honda, Yamaha, Yamaha, Honda, Kawasaki at the lead of this uh, Final Ipo and Superbike race for the day at round two of the 2015 Sport uh, Insurance really Australasian Superbike Championship. Side of Wayne Maxwell here, is he? Geez, if it wasn't his teammate, he would have shoved it in there, I know. Well, he was having a big long look. In fact, he was probably staring at that gap and uh, thinking if he could get in there. So, still Jamie, un virtually unchallenged. Wayne's sort of shown him a wheel here and there, but kept his powder dry so far. Did you see then Allerton had the front wheel in the air as he was still lent over, getting on the gas that hard, coming out onto the Swan Insurance straight. Well, he's obviously got a bit of grip from that rear Dunlop then. He's uh, looking like... Wayne's had, this is where Wayne had a look upside, up the inside of Jamie before. Wayne has been very, very strong on the brakes. Here. Jamie runs in a little bit deep to keep him at bay, but Jamie just so control, picks it up off the side of the tyre. See, rear Dunlop wags away on that Dunlop, on that Fireblade SP through to Kawasaki Kink. Well, there's a fair amount of respect between Jamie Stoper and Wayne Maxwell, but they didn't mind battling each other hard when they were teammates. I'm sure now that they're on opposite teams, they're not going to go any less easy on each other. Jamie doing a little Scandinavian flick there again into the Honda hairpin. He is the master of it, isn't Turn he? Turn five at this 2.6 kilometre Malala Motorsport Park circuit. Wayne, just to the inside again. Bike Malibu moving around a bit there from up. Jamie Stouffer down into the final uh, complex of corners here at Malala. Troy Herfoss is going to have to be uh, a little bit rude and pushy, I think, shortly and get past Allen. Otherwise, he's going to get mugged from behind by Mike Jones before long. Well, will he pull off one of his famous manoeuvres here at turn two? As they go through turn one now, is he close enough to Allerton to try and dive up the inside? No, he's not. Allerton's got the line well and truly covered. There was no room for a CBR SP to get through there. And both Mike Jones out race three victor yesterday and made the wily move of using his new tyre in uh, Saturday's final race three, which of course put him on the front row of the grid for today. Good move by the Cube Racing rider. But uh, we thought we would have been suffering for grip more today due to that fact than he has been. So uh, Mike taking some good results here. Maybe he put, used that uh, tyre in this morning's race though too, and that was why he was so far down the field. This morning's up the inside of Jamie Stouffer into Honda Hairpin. He's just going to run Jamie wide here a little bit. Jamie's going to get a better Oh, run Maxwell out of the out seat. seat. That's also buggered Jamie up a little bit, but Jamie's recovered well. That's going to give Allerton a sniff too. I think Allerton will take Maxwell down the, into the uh, Dunlop Esses this time around. Oh, Wayne, so deep. Allerton does go the down back. the inside. Jeez, he nicked it, nearly tagged the back of Jamie there too. Well, as, we, as we said, Allerton looks like he means serious business in this uh, final race. Herfoss. Mike Jones is up to fourth place. Herfoss shuffled back to fifth. Herfoss, our championship leader, is in fifth place. Needs to take a better swag of points in this last stanza to really head to Eastern Creek in a commanding position. And half a second. Oh, Herfoss back, back up through. the inside of Jones and his favourite overtaking <laughs> manoeuvre. There is half a second. Covers the top five with the two wow. thirds of race distance gone. Here comes Wayne Maxwell back up the inside of Glenn Allerton. It's going to trip each other. This, of course, this battle will helping Jamie immensely. Just managing to uh, take out a fraction of well, a couple of bike lengths every time they battle for that second and third position. And here it's comes Troy Herfoss. It's not even half race distance yet, Phil. We're out of breath. Yeah, no, it's just over half race distance. Two thirds oh. we're at. Oh, the timing's well behind. So Jamie uh, through, leads them through uh, Honda Hairpin. Four and a half laps to run. It almost holds your breath stuff now, uh, that... especially if you're... Uh, one of the team members that are looking at your riders out there, Paul Free, would be hoping that uh, Troy Herfoss can make his way forward. He probably wouldn't be too upset to see Jamie Stouffer take another victory he'd, in the weekend as well. He'd like to, ideally, Herfoss would like to uh, get up to the back of the line. Ideally, he'd like to win, but he'd like to get in front of those two Yamahas and perhaps see Glenn Allerton slot ahead of Wayne Maxwell. I'm sure Glenn Allerton would be more than happy with that one as well as they make their way through turn two, the race tech corner. Jamie's still looking on the ninth so smooth. Lap. Crew Holiday still in seventh place. Matt Walters in eighth. Matt Harding in ninth. Evan Biles rounds out the top ten. Benny Burke uh, unfortunately has crashed out of this race, along with Linda McGee, who crashed out on the uh, the first red oh, flag. Mike Jones, very wide. That's the end of his uh, his podium challenge, perhaps. But no, no. Of course, he, that was Sean Condon. I must have been looking at there, wasn't it? No, no. It was, it was, it was Mike Jones. Jones recovered well. He pulled it up and got on the fat part of the tyre and drove out hard. Of course, the Kawasaki is good up towards the kink there. But Jamie Stouffer still leads with a clinical performance so far on board bike number two.
Still trying to get used to that. It was always bike number 27 for Jamie Stouffer. It was for so many years. And his brother, of course, number 26. So down now into uh, the Dunlop S's. Allerton still looking like he means serious business. Glued to the back of his teammate. And Troy Herfoss in turn. Right glued to the very small ducktail of the new Whoa. Yamaha. Really back squiggle from uh, Glen Allen Yamaha there. Herfoss has a look up the inside. Into Herfoss turn one. is going to have a look down through turn two, is he? No, he's on the outside. Not quite. He thinks about it. Race Tech turn two. He's got the inside line. He's got to oh. go. He has to pull out. There that was, was no room through there to uh, try no. and fit the CBRSP through. Not even Troy Herfoss can thread the needle through there. The master of the turn two overtake. Well, we're on Let's lap see. 10 of 12. Oh, the back end of Allen's machine really wagging the tail now. Only a couple of laps to go for these Dunlops to survive. But how smooth and clean is Jamie Stouffer looking at the yeah. front? Never Look at him there. Even though he's down into uh, turn four, late on the brakes oh, with the Troy's bike drifting in. Through. Too wide, Mike Jones is through. But, uh, well, Troy might be able to get him back down the end of uh, the Bell Helmet's back straight here if he's lucky. But see, no one's dominated this weekend, have they, Trev? No. Because everyone has made a few mistakes. I think fair Troy's indication of how hard side. everyone's pushing Herfoss. Nerfs Mike Jones out of the way. Essentially used him as a berm at the beginning of the Stunlop S's. It's, uh, Herfoss gonna be oh, there. Jones! Oh, nearly out of the seat, nearly off the track. Looks over his shoulder. It's all right, Mike, there's no one there. Just keep pushing on. Well, I must say that that's the end of Herfoss's podium challenge, I believe. I think it's down to these three now. He'd be We're on the penultimate on lap. So there's about, Trev, probably about four kilometres to go. Yeah. Will Allen and dust up Maxwell? That's the other next question to be answered. If given half an opportunity, I dare say he probably will. So Troy Herford will be egging him, behind, egging him on from behind. Jamie Stouffer looks like he may have even pulled out a little bit of a gap now. Allerton, Maxwell and Stouffer all recording their fastest laps on the last lap of the race. All, all six 106 nines. nines. The fastest lap of the race is Mike Jones' early 6'8 still, but uh, he's not doing that pace now. He's drifted back to the 8s and 9s. Those top three are only a tenth off that fastest lap with uh, only one tour to go as they come round to complete this lap. Jamie Stouffer still leads on bike number two for Paul Fries' Honda Racing Team. Kev Marshall's Yamahas with Wayne Maxwell and Glenn Allerton at the helm are in second and third place. Uh, remember at that very corner there where uh, Wayne, Wayne Maxwell, Maxwell dusted up Jamie Stouffer last year. I think that was the second, or was that the final race? It was of the, the final race, and because Jamie wow. let rip with a couple of expletives <laughs> on the podium. It was a very uncharacteristic response from Jamie Stouffer in Park Fermi. But uh, hopefully we don't have a, a repeat of that uh, th this time around, otherwise there won't be more than a couple of expletives. Well, Jamie Stouffer has got the red mist visor well and truly engaged on the front of that bell helmet at He's the moment as he leads there. them out of the uh, turn two DID chains corner, turn oh. three DID chains. Picks it up on the fat back of the that part of the tyre. Five blade pulls a little wheelie there on that last place. Oh, look at Stouffer drifting, drifting it through, through the king. There's only one. That, Unbelievable that. action there from Jamie Stouffer. He's down through Honda Corner, hits the apex perfectly. Unless Maxwell can really do oh. something incredible down here into the Dunlop S's. And I think that wheel stand just cost and him then, his chance. And then that. a bit of sideways There's movement a, as well yep. for Wayne Maxwell. In fact, it could give Glenn Allerton a little sniff. Jamie in. Jamie's into the S's now, and I think oh, he may he have was. just enough. Run, can he? Right can Wayne Maxwell there. try and get up the no inside? Chance. Not even Jamie. Wayne Maxwell can get there. Jamie, Jamie Stouffer is going to take victory. Final race of the day, another victor. Three race victors for out of three races here in the iPhone Superbike class. Wayne Maxwell takes second. Glenn Allerton takes third. 0.4 of a second, Trev, between the top three. What a race. Congratulations to the top three. Congratulations to everyone in the Superbike class. What a fantastic last race. I think that will also give Wayne Maxwell the round victory and it could even promote Jamie Stouffer up into second, uh, second place, maybe, but, uh, well, it's gonna be very, very close. We'll wait for confirmation from the, uh, the guys at CompuTime. Jamie will just be so reinvigorated by that result. As, as sore as he will be, the, uh, the pleasures of victory will, uh, will wash away that soreness. And it gives you an idea of what the other competitors think of Jamie Stouffer is that they're all there and the very first people to try and congratulate him are the guys that have been out there racing with him on track as uh, Glenn Allerton uh, gets ready to take off his brand new helmet with uh, the new design with all of his uh, personal sponsors. And after his trials and tribulations so far this weekend, Glenn's probably never been more happy and content with a third place result. That's a fair result and he was looking very racy in that last one as he well. Yeah, he had, had some attitude happening there, that's for sure. That's the Glenn Allerton of old. It is. Plenty of, ag plenty of aggression. Wayne Maxwell has once again ridden a very smart round, taking points when he could and uh, playing it safe when he had to. 
and uh, gives his uh, long-time mechanic there, Warren Monson, who uh, followed him over from Suzuki to Team Honda and now to Team Yamaha. And we see Jamie Stoper, our uh, Is that a, a right smile on Jamie Stoper's face? Yeah, I think he's pretty impressed. He's a man of little emotion, but he did have a <laughs> smile on his face there. <laughs> I think Wayne's glad to see him back in contention and probably also more glad that he, uh, he finished ahead of Troy Herfos because, you know, it's a long season. It's a long championship. We won't be finished until early December. I think it gives you an idea of how hard that race was when they're all taking some uh, pretty deep breaths and they all look like they've been through a serious workout. <laughs> See, they're not riding these things around the backyard. <laughs> they're even talking about how sideways they were getting. So uh, these boys uh, throw it all on the line and uh, been very impressive here this weekend hanging on to these missiles. Well, Jamie Stafford, congratulations. A great way to finish the weekend on your comeback ride. Yeah, it's great. You know, like I, I got a win yesterday, but to us, we're not there to win th that championship. This is the one where everyone puts everything on the line and all day it's been hard racing. And uh, when I got out in front, I was just happy head down, you know, uh, just trying my hardest. When Wayne came, came past me, he made a mistake and I knew I couldn't let him pass again. So, uh, yeah, just happy head down and uh, bum up and keep going I'm just worried about that last hairpin on the last lap I didn't stuff it up this year so it was quite good yeah paybacks are a real bitch aren't they <laughs> yeah I don't know if it's a payback I'm still a long way in the championship behind in the championship but you know um, for my first ride back it's been great um, you know uh, I didn't think I'd go this good so we can only improve before the next meeting I couldn't help but notice the joy on Paul Free's face he came over gave you a big hug well done to the team yeah that's right you know the, the whole team works well together me, Troy, I hope Lyndon's all right too. Um, all the mechanics get along. It's um, yeah, it's a good atmosphere and we're just glad to, uh, you know, get the win. I, I, I suppose in, in Paul's mind is probably, am I going to come back any good or, or not, you know? But, um, yeah, I think he was happy that I'm, yeah, riding, riding pretty good. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll uh, see how we go next meeting. Next meeting is at Sydney Motorsport Park. You like that circuit? Yeah, for sure, you know, it's, um, it's always been a, a good circuit to me so hopefully we can get there and it's basically my home track so get there and see how we go six weeks of gym work ahead yeah the missus reckon she's got me on a <laughs> on a bit of a gym plan and uh dive well she had me on it before i came here i've let it slip over the weekend but you know um yeah well uh, we should be uh, fitter and better for the next round good on you mate we look forward to seeing you in sydney thank you there you go jamie safer well, Wayne, this time last year it was a reversal of roles, really, but you can't be unhappy with your results this weekend. No, I'm certainly not unhappy. unhappy. You know, the uh, new Yamaha R1M worked awesome. The guys at Yamaha, all of them, you know, uh, they worked uh, great. Kev, Ryan, Jeff, the whole team, you know, they've been at the workshop doing massive, you know, 80 hours a week trying to get this bike to where we need it, and uh, we're slowly getting there, and it's good to see the hard work paying off. In terms of what's ahead, we we're uh, off to Sydney Motorsport Park. It, it's a bit of an indifferent track for you, isn't it, really? Oh, I've had success there and I've had and uh, I haven't had so much success. You know, I wouldn't call the first round a disaster mm. uh, there. You know, that's one of Crew's strongest tracks and to come away with the leading Yamaha there was, was great. But, um, you know, the main focus is uh, to debrief from today. Jamie rode an awesome race and he deserved that win and uh, he, he controlled it very well at the front and set a, you know, really, really fast pace. It's great to have another, you know, two Yamahas on the podium with Glenn and uh, we'll debrief, work on it and uh, go from there. It's inch by inch, mile by mile, isn't it? Yeah, just lap by lap, mate. Just dissect it down and uh, keep it simple, and that's what we've been doing. Uh, that's what's got me two championships uh, so far, and uh, hopefully we can work towards another one. Looking forward on the Yamaha. Well done, mate. Thank you. Good on you. And in third place, Glenn Allerton, also doing a fantastic job. You said to me early in the weekend that you had a lot of confidence this weekend, and it seems to have paid off for you. Well done, Glenn. Yeah, for sure. The feeling with the bike was probably you know, a little bit better before I crashed it. But uh, that happens when you get a bit confident, you know, um, in qualifying there a bit off more like a chew, but the team did a great job of putting the bike back together and it felt exactly the same. But, uh, you know, I had a bit of an advantage in that race and I wasn't able to take um, full advantage of it because uh, I saved a new tire for the last race. And, um, you know, <coughs> at the start, I was kind of just hanging in there, seeing what the guys were doing. I definitely had speed. And then I, when I saw Jamie starting to get away a little bit, I tried to go around Wayne and then sort of got caught up battling with Wayne a little bit and um, that'll sort of got the tyre a bit hot as you can see the conditions are quite warm so um, probably chewed the best part of the tyre out when I should have been saving that to the end and um, you know but that's racing and uh, everybody wants to win so we'll just keep keep chipping away at it slowly getting confidence with the new bike and the settings so um, 
hopefully when we get to Eastern Creek, I can get a bit more confidence and go a bit faster. Well, talking about Eastern Creek, it's six weeks away. Having been there once on the new bike already, that must give you confidence going into this third round? Yeah, for sure. We got some good direction from coming here and, and being in, at Eastern Creek already. So uh, the bike's getting better and better all the time. We're, we're in a totally different setting than we've had before. Um, so. Yeah, I think the bike will work a lot better now when we go to Eastern Creek, so I'm looking forward to it. Look forward to seeing you up there in six weeks, mate. Thanks. Well, there you go, folks. The iPhone Superbikes. That concludes the second round as part and parcel of the Swan Insurance Australasian Superbike Championship. But out on the track.